What's going on, guys? Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning back in. Um, I'm already out here in the shop, and I've already got it with me. So I just figured I'd go on and do it. So, let's do it. Before we go on any further, this video is going to be sponsored by Bolt Watch. Yes, tactical grade watch. Now, it is a smartwatch. I can get messages on, uh, from my, my phone. Uh, sometimes when I get a phone call, my watch will vibrate and let me know who's calling before the phone even will start to ring. So, pretty cool watch. Uh, for you fitness guys, you can track all kind of stuff. There's a function on here where it tracks your different sports, basketball, running, tennis, ping pong. It, it tracks all of that stuff because it, it's tracking your, uh, your heart rate. Uh, when you're running, you know, you can time yourself with the, the running, see how long you ran. If you download the app, it comes with a card that you can scan. With the app, you actually can track yourself GPS to see where all you've ran, how far you've ran. So, pretty cool deal. I'm a little upset because I have the Transistor Plus, which is a great watch. Only I didn't realize they had a Transistor Pro that does so much more. And because of this goofy pandemic, whatever stock they have right now, that's all they have. They're not going to restock until after the pandemic. So, to the people at Bolt Watch, if you see this, please, please restock your stuff. I need a Transistor Pro watch. Please. Also, this video is going to be sponsored by Wu Tungsten and our new partnership with them the aqua flag apparel so as soon as that stuff comes through I'm gonna be getting me some shirts so I can look good on the water and while you edit you should get you some shirts so you can look good aqua flag I'll be leaving some links down below I'll also be leaving some links down below for Wu Tungsten because them oh my goodness the weights they're so awesome the uh, the, the weight is stamped on them so there's no more guesswork there's no more trying to hold the weight in your hand and guess uh, i think this is about a quarter ounce nope it's already stamped on there you know what you got in your hand all you gotta do is thread it up throw it out catch some fish woo tungsten i'll leave a link down below with them also so that way you can get you some cool weights and uh get you some cool apparel from aqua flat let's jump into this video because last month these guys brought you the Texas rig box. Now, last month at the end of my video, I, I kind of told y'all, you know, I can't wait to see what the next month was gonna be. I kind of already had a sneak peek because they had it on the back. So, Wu Tungsten, or I'm sorry, uh, Monster Bass. What is Monster Bass, people? If y'all don't know what Monster Bass is by now, you, you, I ain't even going to say you've been sleeping under a rock because I'm pretty sure any and everything under the rock knows what Monster Bass is. Monster Bass is a monthly lure subscription, okay? Here is what makes Monster Bass so different. You pick the region that you live in and that you fish in and the weight or the weights and the lures that you're fishing, it's almost tailor-made for your area. Meaning, if you are fishing in an area that, you know, you don't have a lot of thick vegetation, there's probably no need for you to have big half ounce, ounce, three, three quarter ounces. You know, there's no need for you to have those big weights if you don't fish that type of cover. But with monster bass, depending on the region you fish, they try to put everything in there that will kind of just make it an all-around tackle box or tackle bag for that particular region also it's a month-to-month -month basis so here in the south where i live we are getting we're in spring now so springtime usually tells us the fish are starting to move up shallow they're getting ready to spawn i believe down in the florida area fish have already been spawning uh, where I'm at, we've got some funky weather, so the fish are probably just as confused as everybody else and don't know what they want to do. But fish should be moving up to the shallows, making beds, getting ready to spawn. So a lot of the baits we will be getting in the next few months 
will basically get you set to fish that uh, that spawning period or that life cycle period for the bass. Also, a lot of the baits will be, you know, color matching. They're trying to match the hatch that you're fishing. So, monster bass actually gets very detailed in their bait selection. And we're not talking just no name baits, y'all. We're talking Strike King, Z-Man, Lucky Strike, Vicious. We're talking baits that a lot of these professionals are throwing out here day in and day out, fishing tournaments and cashing major, major money. So, Monster Bass is the way to go. I know people say, well, how can you say that if you haven't used any of the other ones? Well, I mean, it's kind of the same way if, you know, you go out here and you buy, let's say you go out here and buy a Traeger grill, which I don't have, but I have a Pit Boss, and the Pit Boss works great. Why do I need to go buy a Traeger to compare them when they do the same thing? But I know that the one I have worked, so that's what I'm gonna go with. So, Monster Bass. That's the one that worked. That's the one I'm gonna go with. With all of that being said, let's get into it. So, this month, last month, we had the Texas Rick bag. So, this month, Rick and the people over at Monster Bass has thrown together a Carolina Rig bag. Okay, so with that, we also have some crankbaits, uh, some square bill crankbaits and stuff. So let's see here in this month's booklet, the history of the Carolina rig. Some people call it the old ball and chain may have originally been used by anglers to target big catfish in the swift waters of South Carolina's Santee Cooper region and later adopted for the pursuit of largemouth bass. So I didn't know that it was used primarily for Carolina. Hey, here's some other facts. While its origins remain obscure, the then called Do Nothing Rig took Jack Chancellor to the peak of bass fishing fame when he won the 1985 Bassmaster Classic with what has since come to be called the Carolina Rig. So, I didn't know that. So, Rick has went as far as getting a little bit of history and background on these different setups that we'll be getting in our uh, monthly subscriptions and then he's went through just like he did with last month to talk about uh, how you set it up where to fish it all of that stuff so let's talk about the Carolina rig okay so Carolina rig we have some Z-Man or hogs uh, baits California crawl this is a five pack these are four inch baits Yep, this is open. Some of these you have to tear them open, but this one you didn't. Now, Z-Man baits come on these little trays. It is highly recommended that you keep them on the trays. Oh, those look nice. Carolina, a little bit of green pumpkin in there with some red flake. But it's a little, this little crawl bait right here. Uh, you do have to pull the appendages apart right there to get a lot of that action. But, uh... That is a really cool bait. Uh, Carolina rig is pretty much like a Texas rig. You can't go wrong with your selection of plastics. You know, any kind of soft plastic will work. Here we have Grand Bass Fishing Lures. Uh, this looks like a small company getting started. Made in Texas. So, this is a black and blue 6.5 inch Airtail Wiggler, black, blue flake. It's a 10 pack. And there you go, that guy there. Okay, so you got two soft plastics. Uh, Rick has thrown in some 3 aught EWG, EWG Sabertooth Monster Bass hooks as well as a Monster Bass Carolina Rig kit. This comes with two weights, two clackers, four beads, and three swivels. Now, it is it does take a while to rig up a Carolina Rig, so I'm not gonna rig one up like I did last month with the Texas Rig. But here in the book, it already tells you. I'm gonna get close to the camera so y'all might not see me. I apologize, but I'm trying to get as close so y'all can see the book, okay? 
hopefully that light doesn't mess it up you have your weight which your main line that comes off of your reel you're gonna put that weight on there first and in this one you uh, thread uh, a bead and a clacker and a bead that, that to helps make some sound helps that fish hone in on where that bait is at and then after you've added either the bead clacker bead or you can just go with the weight and then a bead you want to then tie on one of uh, one of your swivels here so again first you'll throw on a weight and then the way the book had it you'll throw on a bead one of these brass clackers and then another bead and then the swivel so the bead is going to actually protect your knot on that swivel there so that way it doesn't come untied or it doesn't break or anything like that after you've tied that swivel onto your main line you are then going to make a leader line and it can either be some line off of your reel or you can go in your box grab a spare uh, spool and cut a leader off of that this recommends generally 18 to 36 inches um, I've seen some people in fact I just watched a video the other day with b -Lat. Brian Latimer, if y'all don't know who he is, y'all should check him out. The way he does his leaders, he grabs the, the tag end of the, yeah, I don't have any here with me, but basically he grabs the tag end here and he has the line right here with his spool and what he'll do is go one and then he'll drop it, grab the line here again and then he'll pull right there and then he'll cut. That's his leader. That's how he measures it. No, no real science behind it, it's just that's what he does and he just says yeah that looks about right. If he needs to make it shorter, he can clip it, make it shorter. But what you do is you get you a leader line that you are then going to tie onto the other end of your swivel and then you will tie your hook on. Once you've tied your hook on, your Carolina rig is set and then you then, you know, put whatever soft plastic you want on there and you throw it out there i can't demonstrate it here in the shop but uh the next video i make i will throw the carolina rig so that way you guys can see how you throw a carolina rig now it says uh this is a this is a bottom bait and that's the basics for a carolina rig is you're fishing on the bottom you want to maintain bottom contact so where can you throw this grass pumps ledges open water points rocks you don't want to throw this lure into a lot of heavy cover down here at the bottom it says gear suggestion your rod 7.6 medium heavy fast action rod your real 7 to 1 gear ratio your main line 17 to 20 pound fluorocarbon your leader line 14 to 15 pound either monofilament or fluorocarbon your weight size, a quarter ounce or a half ounce tungsten barrel weight, and then your hook, 3 aught EWG. Reason for the 3 uh, three aught is because your plastics can go anywhere from a really big to maybe, you know, medium size like these Z-Man boar hogs. You don't want a really big hook because you want to make sure you get that hook into the plastic. You don't want any extra hook that might be hanging. So that's why they suggest the 3 aught. Uh, and that's basically it. Uh, what I can show you is, hang on, I'll try. Okay, I have a rod here. Once you throw it out, uh, for years I used to fish the Carolina rig. Carolina rig was actually one of the second setups that I learned how to fish with my dad. Only. I didn't realize I was still doing it wrong when I learned from him. And that's not to say that my dad was just didn't know what he was doing. I think I just didn't know what I was doing. But what I've learned since then is after you've made your cast, okay, and you're waiting until you see your line go slack, that's how you know your lure has now hit the bottom. What I have learned to do is you to, to make sure you don't fatigue yourself. Just go ahead and tuck that rod into your side. Kind of use the rod against your forearm there to stabilize it and just kind of tuck it into your side. What you want to do, point your rod towards your bait and reel up that slack. 
once you see that you've reeled up your slack, don't just keep reeling. Reel up the slack, but then just a slow pull to the side. Once you get to the side, you want to now move your rod back forward, facing your, your lure. While you're doing that motion, you take up your slack again. Make a couple of turns. Uh, that's probably the reason they suggest the 7 to 1 gear ratio. So that way as you're swinging back towards you know the direction of your lure, it only takes you a couple of turns to reel up that slack and then the same thing. Now, the speed of this retrieve, it is a very slow way of fishing. But just like any other style, it's going to be dictated by what the fish want. If they want something really slow, let's say the weather, um, water temperature is probably in those 50s, so it's a little cold. You probably want to, after you reeled up your slack, slow swing over to, I would say if you reel with your right hand, okay, and you're holding the rod with your left, I would probably say you want to drag to your right. And then probably just hold it there. And then as you reel up your slack and you come back forward, again, slow drag to the right. The reason I'm going to say I would probably go to the right is because when you do feel that bite, you want to make sure as you come back forward, you want to take up that slack and then make a good sweeping hook set. You don't want to, and then try to jack them, okay? Reel up, take up that slack, come back forward, make sure your slack is taken up, you can feel the pressure of the fish, and make a sweeping hook set to that side. That way you can keep leverage. You, you need. If y'all have done this to the opposite side of what I'm saying to the left, let me know so that way I can get it right. But, you know, depending on how you're standing on your boat or depending on how your boat is positioned, you could lose leverage going one way or the other. But if you're paying attention, you take up that slack. Depending on your boat position, it is going to determine whether you're dragging to the right or to the left then just make sure that when you feel that bite, you come back forward, take up that slack, and then make that sweeping hook set to the side. To the side, whichever side, just make sure you make a good sweeping hook set. And then after that, the fight is on, and then get them in. Uh, let's see what else we got in the book. Okay, then we have that was just the basics right there that I just went over. And now you have lesson number two, dragon shell bars with the Carolina rig. And for this one, they went to Alex Rudd for some of his advice. Uh, if you haven't watched his channel, Alex Rudd Fishing, I suggest you do. My man has got a lot of good information. Uh, you can learn a lot from this guy and the way he fishes stuff. So jump on over, check that out. Just trying to go through this book uh, for this month from his for his learn from a legend he got Peter the livers the liveros the liveros I don't know who this guy is but let's see early on the liveros set himself apart as an expert with the Carolina rig I just got fresh fascinated sorry I just got fascinated with it when I found out a tournament was won with it on the St. John's River. So that was it. Uh, Peter Liveros, aka Peter T, enjoyed a career that saw him amass more than two million in tournament winnings as he captured titles in both professional leagues, BASS and FLW, now owned by Major League Fishing. So now moving on, lesson number three. Uh, they also threw in some crankbaits. So, let's see here. This one here that we got. Talking about square bills. So, let's see what we got. So that's round. So, here we have Team Arc CT5, I believe. Square bill crankbait. Ghost Sexy Shad. 
So, I mean, square bill is a square bill. Throw it out there, try to make that bottom contact, digging into the ground, imitating the shad, you know. Again, let's see what we say here. Throwing it around grass, pumps, brush piles, rip wrap, points, docks, trees. Try to bounce it off of some of those objects, deflecting it off of there. Good way to uh, get some strikes. For the, uh, for the square bill, their gear su suggestions, my goodness. The rod, medium heavy, fiberglass, or composite rod. That's because of that extra flex in there with those treble hooks. You don't want too stiff of a rod and rip those hooks out. So you want something that's gonna have some give in it. So when those fish try to surge down, your rod will give and kind of create like a sponginess. So that way they can't get those hooks out. Uh, the real six, three to one gear ratio. You don't want to fish this super fast. So a reel that will force you to slow down is probably the best thing to do. And then the line, it says 20 pound monofilament, probably because monofilament, well, no, monofilament floats, but because monofilament also has a lot of stretch. So when those fish again, make that surge, you got your line that's stretching, you got your rod that's bending and giving. So it'll keep those fish pinned but it won't really give them that ability or that opportunity to throw those hooks and then you end up losing the fish. Uh, the next one we got is another crankbait. And for this one, we have the Lucky Strike crankbait. This color is called Moody Blue, 3 8 ounce, deep smoothie. Uh, it's got a decent sized bill. So this one, let's see if it says, Uh, I'm guessing it gets down to about uh, three to five feet. So this would be another one of those shallow running crankbaits. Um, again, rod suggestions, 6.9 medium heavy, slow taper, composite or fiberglass rod. Three to one, 3.1, 6.3 to one gear ratio. I'm gonna get it right, y'all. 6.3 to one gear ratio, 20 pound monofilament. Uh, again, pumps, ledges, brush piles, rip wrap, docks, rocks, trees. Again, you're making contact, you're bouncing it off of the bottom, bounce it off of the, uh, the objects and, and structure and stuff, triggering those bites. That'll get you a lot of, uh, a lot of bites. And then last but not least, some people think that this lure is only a cold water bait. That is far from the truth. When the fish are feeding on shad and they're feeding heavy and you see them busting on the surface, that is probably the best time to pick up a jerk bait. And for this one, we have the Vicious uh, Ripper 110. This is a 110 millimeter, half ounce, of course floating, and it's in a gizzard shad color. Uh, for this one, it looks like he went to Travis, the smallmouth crush for his advice on this. 610 medium action composite or fiberglass rod. Again, 6.3 to one gear ratio, 12 pound fluorocarbon. And this one, with this uh, jerk bait, that's gonna depend on the fish on your cadence. You can throw that thing out there. You wanna make a good long cast, so bomb it out there, okay? Now, some people I've seen, they'll take a couple of turns to get it down into the water and then your cadence is going to be, you know, play with that cadence. Some, a lot of people like to go one, one, two, one, one, two, one. Some people like to do that. Some people will throw it out there and then they're just pop, pop, pop. You know, just again, bomb it out there. One, one, two, three, one, one, two, one, two, three. Play with the cadence. Let the fish tell you what they want. Again, if they're schooling, they're busting on shad, bomb that thing out there and try to work that thing like a shad that's trying to get away. You probably will trigger a lot of bites that way. And then, uh, that's it for all of the lures. As always, if you get one of these, you will get one of these golden tickets. Whenever Rick goes live Thursdays, 7 p.m., if he calls your number, you get some kind of a prize. Uh, as always, we have a Monster Bass sticker. This one says Rise and Glide. I have not thrown a glide bait, so that might be the next thing I need to try. And then you get 
get a monster bass uh neck buff i really like these things they help keep the for one they help keep the wind off your face when you're riding down that lake especially in cold weather and that cold wind hit your face this will help protect it warm weather this will help protect your neck from those sun rays for those of you that burn easy but then they just look so freaking cool who doesn't want to look cool on the water so get you one of these monster bass neck buffs and look cool and to top it off they're back they're back they're back the bags are back I gotta figure out what I'm gonna put in this bag. I'm gonna label it. All of my other bags that I've had like this are out in the boat. I have got them filled up with different lures specific and I've labeled them. So now, whenever I'm digging through my box, looking for some kind of a bait, I can grab the bag I want and now I just gotta pick the right color that I want. So, gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with that one. That is it for this month. I'm gonna take a sneak peek. Oh. Y'all just gonna have to wait and see. Next month is gonna be a good one. If you haven't already, uh, check out Monster Bass YouTube channel. Subscribe to them because they're always putting out content on how to fish these baits and just different little tips on certain things. Not just with the Monster Bass lures, but just other tips and tricks. How to tie certain knots or whatever it may be. But it's a lot of good information that's being put out. So I highly suggest you check out the Monster Bass YouTube channel. Again, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Make sure you hit the bell so you get notified anytime I put out a video. Smash that thumbs up button. Do the people's elbow on it. Um, if you're a Triple H fan, hey, pedigree that thumbs up button. Let me know what you think. Drop some comments down below. And I guess the next time I see you guys, I will do my best to show you how you throw and fish a Carolina rig. Hopefully, we can catch some fish while we're doing that. Till next time, please, please, please be safe out there on the water. Be safe in everything else you do. And I'll see you guys the next time. The Great Outdoors.